And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries. As we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family, your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance before we get into our intriguing content today. Please join me in welcoming our featured guest. Linda Eisenman is in the house, Preferred Home Brokers. Welcome. Thank you, Ron. Always good to be with you. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. And then remind you if you ever have any home or finance related questions. I am the consumer advocate looking out for you, and you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990-800-306-1990 or ronsingleradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. While I do have a great team, when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you, even if you don't have any needs today. Save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. You know, I have a feeling, as we celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio, and I have a feeling that the celebration folks, well, they must have gone on COVID hiatus or something, because you know, yesterday we had nothing exciting to celebrate. We celebrate, but there was nothing really exciting Blueberry Popsicle Day, really? Today, National Welsh Rarebit Day. I don't even know what the heck that one is. National Bowling League Day. Uh, I don't know about that one either. I think we might have to skip to tomorrow when it's National Chianti Day. I, that one, I can, I can, we can deal with that one. Works for me. And, Nash, and National Macadamia that day. Okay. That one will work. I don't know. I don't know of any anyone that would fit this bill because tomorrow's also National Lazy Moms Day. I don't know how you can be a mom and be lazy. I think that that's just you know. I tried staying home and and taking over some of the chores that my wife handled for many years. The only thing I could say at the end of the day was, when can I go back to work? <laughs> that was. I mean, that was challenging. I was not excited about staying home. Holy cow! Speaking of not excited, let's take a look at the markets today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down almost 600 points, 592. Yeah, S&P 500 down 101. NASDAQ, whoa, NASDAQ is down 513 points. Oil down 56 cents per barrel. U.S. 10-year Treasury is down just a little bit. We're at 0 0.63 on the yield of the 10-year treasury what's going on how is that affecting the markets why are the markets doing what they're doing what is the occasion here being down almost 600 points we don't usually see that we haven't seen that in a long time and i had somebody already text me this morning uh, and you know i appreciate the text messages the emails that we get and they said ron with the market going down what effect does that have on interest rates and generally, it's a very, very simple answer. When the market goes down, people are start are selling. That's generally the cause of the market going down. There's more people selling than people buying. Market goes down. What do people do with the money? Well, they put it into something a little bit safer. That's generally the bond market. So the bond market, the bonds go up, interest rates go down. Well, we are seeing the bonds go up just a little bit this morning, not as much as the markets are going down. But here's the issue. So many times recently, whenever the stock market goes down, the vast majority of individuals have seen that as a buying opportunity. So even though the market's going down, people are saying, well, it's not going to stay down, so I'm going to go in there and buy, so they're not really putting their money into the bonds, which would make the bonds go up, yield go down, or interest rates go down. So that's really what's going on right now. So the bottom line on that one, as is... Most of the time, the answer to the question is the market going down, is it good for the stock market or for the bond market or for interest rates or bad? The answer is it depends. So we're down almost 600 points right now, and we haven't seen the, the benefits or that, that kind of benefit. It also has to do with the day of the month. 
right? So right now, we're getting close to a holiday weekend. Investors don't really like having their money at risk over a long weekend. It, there's a lot of things that can go on over a long holiday weekend. So they like to, to put their money on the sidelines. That would bring the, the stock market down and it would not have any effect on the bond market because they're not going to go short term into bonds. So the money just goes to the sidelines. That could be what we're seeing right now as well. So those that are wondering about that, want to know what's going on. That's the answer to the question. The other part of it is we got a head fake today. Yes, indeed, we did get a head fake because we got the job, the, the unemployment numbers, and the media is really head faking because so many of them just look at headlines and they don't understand the underlying issues. So when you listen to Ron Siegel Radio, we give you those underlying issues. The initial job claims for last week was released. Join 881,000 individuals filed for unemployment benefits for the first time. Big number, but it was better than what was expected. The issue is how many people stopped filing for traditional unemployment and went on the pandemic unemployment assistance claims? Well, we added about a million people there. So yes, we did have people coming off of the continuing claims that dropped, the continuing unemployment claims dropped, that improved by 1.2 million people to 13.3. That's what the media sees, right? They say the continuing claims dropped by 1.2 million and we had a 900,000 go on to the unemployment. So it must be good. Well, where did the people that dropped off unemployment go to? They went to the pandemic unemployment because either their unemployment ran out or they saw it as a need to go over and get more money from that pandemic unemployment benefit. All of those are areas, those are the underlying numbers that many people do not talk about. Why? Because they don't understand them. You gotta look deep into these numbers. I, I, I share this, not that I am, I am just a simple guy, but you know, even as a simple individual, having done this for over 25, 30 years, you know, you start looking and saying, where are the real numbers? Where are the skeletons buried? So that's kind of where some of those skeletons are buried. And we're going to get that Bureau of Labor Statistics number tomorrow. That's the big job number that comes out the first Friday of every month. And, you know, they adjust the numbers because they don't always get those right immediately. I mean, that's pretty quick when you think about it. They're, they're doing it based on modeling. And when you think about the month ended on Monday and they're going to have a number that's this significant on Friday of the same week, pretty tough to do. So we're going to watch that for you. We'll see what the revisions look like for you. We'll be chiming in on our socials, being that I'm going to probably take the day off tomorrow. Not probably, I will be. So that's uh, I'll still be, be checking in and monitoring the things that are going on. Hey, what else is going on in the world today? We found some interesting news. I don't know how many people are going to see this the way I do. Arguably the most influential Democrat in Washington politics claims to have been duped, set up by a hairdresser. Now, I'm not saying whether this hairdresser is the most intelligent person in the world, not the most intelligent person in the world. She probably doesn't get the same level of briefings as Nancy Pelosi. But think about this. She went to the hairdresser in San Francisco at where the salons are closed, and there's, uh, there's video of her getting her hair washed and cut and whatever they do with all that stuff. And she comes out and said, and no mask. Yeah, no mask. I, we, we didn't mention that part, too. After she tells the president that when he did his speech at the White House, they were vandalizing the White House. That was her term, vandalizing the White House. But then she says, well, she was set up by the nail salon owner. Really? How could that possibly be? Do you think the nail salon owner doesn't get gets the same level of briefings that Nancy Pelosi does? I know even from local politics, politicians think the rules apply to you and me, not to them, right? So just watch that. That's fascinated me when she said that it was the hair salon's fault and they owed her an apology. 
Now, from my knowledge of local politics, here's what really happened. Somebody on her staff called and said, Mrs. Pelosi wants to get her hair cut. She wants to do it tomorrow. Please make it happen or else. Just fascinating how that goes. That's, uh, that's just a little bit of information for you. Hey, good morning, Pat. Glad to see you with us. Uh, and I will tell Linda that you're, you're tuned in to us this morning. Hey, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, getting your offer accepted in this blazing market, how buyer demand is far above last year's pace. All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our offer number 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure, 10 plus percent return on your investment? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area toughest professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, first mortgage, any mortgage, Gold Star. They've got the programs and the products. You've got the phone. Make the call, 800-306-1990. Again, that's 800-306-1990. Let's take a look at what the markets are doing. We like to do that for you every morning as part of 
the mortgage minute, the Dow Jones Industrial Average now down 541 points. NASDAQ down 495 points. That's going to be fascinating to watch those two since they've added some tech stocks into the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So they have, they're going to mirror each other a little bit closer. The S&P 500 down 101 points. Down 101. We haven't said that in a long time. Yeah, a little painful on that. Ten-year Treasury, yeah, the yield down at 0.628. Mortgage-backed securities, that bond is up, so interest rates down a little bit. We told you a little bit of the numbers and why that was happening. I do like to give you every week at this time Freddie Mac's Mortgage Market Survey, their Mortgage Market Survey. And I, yes, I know. Those of you that are the compliance specialists and the watchdogs, I do not need to give you an APR when I'm giving you a Freddie Mac mortgage market survey report because that's Freddie Mac. They're the one, it's a public number. It's not an individualized number. So for today, September 3, 2.93 is the 30-year the rate. Yes, you have to pay eight-tenths of a point to get that rate. Last year, this week, 3.49. So down about a half a point. You had to pay a half a point to get it last week. This week, you're paying eight-tenths of a point to get it. Last, we were, we were up about two-tenths, two-one-hundredths, I'm sorry, from last week. And then we're, like I say, about down about a half from last year. Why is it all happening? Well, we're, we've told you about what's going on in the uh, uh, stock market, Dow Jones, S&P 500, CDC last night. Companies should prepare to distribute the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as late October. They said there would likely be limited supply initially with more in November and December. Optimistic news, should companies be able to release a successful vaccine in time? Maybe the CDC has news not available to the public. I would assume they probably do. 18 months ago, the talk was margin compression on loans. In quarter two, it's reported that mortgage companies made $4,500 per loan versus $1,600 in the first quarter. So we're watching that number. I told you a little bit about the initial jobless claims in the last segment. It'd be fascinating to see. I'm going to go back because I didn't mention this. Are you planning, are you one of the people that are going to be first in line to get a vaccine? Just fascinating that, uh, not you, me neither. Not me. <laughs> I'm with you, Linda. I don't, you know, something, one of the things, I, I listened to the CEO of Merck and he said that in the last 25 years, there's been seven successful vaccines, and Merck themselves has had four of those seven successful vaccines. And one of the reasons they talk about it is it just takes a long time to find out what are the side effects, right? They're rushing this thing through so quickly, hydroxychloroquine, and you know you, you come up with these issues, and you know to me, I, like I said, I would much rather if you look at the results in the study that we've talked about from the the uh, research PhD and MD at Yale, talking about all the surveys that he's seen with hydroxychloroquine, I'd rather take my chance with a 50-year-old drug than a five-minute-old vaccine. Just throw that out there. That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. I have a question for you. Yes. They had seven successful trials? There were seven successful vaccines. Out of how many trials? They didn't say that. Who knows? Right. I don't, I'm sure a lot of them. 25 years, I'm sure they've been trying to you know, there, there's a zillion. Um, well, we, we know that we know about the vaccine for HIV/AIDS, right? There isn't one. We know about the the vaccine for the swine flu from 10 years ago. There isn't one, right? I mean, they, they, and they've tried all these things. Just because we've thrown, you know, how many billions and billions and billions of dollars at this one, I don't know that money is the answer. And I know you can't buy time with money. No, but we have to try. Well, without a doubt. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm all for trying. I'm just saying that I, I know who the guinea pigs are going to be when they when this this uh, vaccine comes out, right? They're going to force the kids to take the vaccine, or else they're not going to let them go to school. I wouldn't let my kids go. I would, I'd do find another way, you know, initially. And they're going to try and get the seniors to do it, right? I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll be right there. <laughs> and I, no, but but that's who they they consistently try to get on these yeah. initial vaccines because. They're the ones that the government thinks they have the most control over. And I'm just uh, uh, sorry to see that I think that's the way it's going to go. And I know that it's probably not the popular answer, but you know, I've never been a populist anyway. I have to agree with you when it comes to that, though. I get, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's worrisome. Yeah. 
So let's talk a little bit about real estate and offers and you know, Linda, I love it when you come in and, and chat with us because I, I always learn something and, and we can have a great conversation. And you've been through not pandemics, but times when uh, when it's challenging to get offers accepted. Right? I mean, what was it, 2011, 2012, when it was crazy trying to get off after we had all the properties that we get all the distress sales, foreclosures, people, their, their, their properties were out there. And then we start turning around. Interest rates were low. And you get, you know, 100 offers for every property. And how do you get them accepted? What, is there a process or is it just luck? <laughs> well, hopefully there's a lot of thought that's going to go into it. Because there are things that will, I think, favor your offer over someone else's. And not always about price. Price, obviously, is essential. But when it comes down to it, how does the seller make a decision when you've got three or four or half a dozen offers that are at the same price? Makes sense to me. And I, I will share... My personal, uh, maybe it's not my personal, because I'm sure somebody else came up with it. I didn't. Luck, labor, under correct knowledge, mm-hmm. right? The harder you work, the luckier you get. So what are some of the things that you, you would, you would uh, recommend someone do if they find that dream home and, and you know, they're, 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 they want it, but how do, you, how do you deal with all these different people? A lot of agents now, I'm noticing more and more are pricing properties aggressively to entice the multiple offers? Well, you know, I think maybe that was the thought even a few months ago, but when you say price it aggressively, do you, if you price it at the market or where you think it should sell, or are you looking for more people to submit offers? There's different ways, I guess, to look at it. Yeah, I, from what I've been hearing is a lot of people are going either at market or just a little below. You know, I personally, I don't think you need to go anywhere near below at this point in the market that we're in right now. And there are so many ways other than just a price, in my opinion, just price, that the seller's going to look at. And if you have a really good listing agent that is able to decipher the offers and determine the value and the merits of each offer, one maybe over another, and it, it's not always about price. So what are some of the things that we're looking at that, that, that the listing agent's going to be looking at? Or I would submit that even sometimes the, the, the selling agent, the buyer's representative, and kind of connect the dots for a poor listing agent if they need to. Well, I, personally, I, I tend to think that it's always the value of con- connecting, communicating directly with that listing agent before you even write an offer. Oh, really? Okay. And, oh, absolutely. Find out really what the seller's looking for. Sometimes it's not always the price. Sometimes it's the uh, strength of the offer itself. And what I mean by strength of the offer depends upon the quality of the buyer because you can have buyers in different, in different levels of buyer strength. And that can depend upon uh, qualifications, down payment, I mean, contingencies, a lot of different things that are into that into the offer itself. California has one of the largest real estate contracts, as far as I'm concerned, probably in the United States. That's right. And it, no, they, yeah, <laughs> too. But there is so much to consider. And I think it's a value for a buyer, a home buyer, to ask their agent for at least a copy of the offer to review in advance. And if nothing else, just they're not going to completely understand most of the most of the uh, paragraphs or issues in the contract itself, but have an overall understanding of what's required when it comes to making an offer. You know, normally when a buyer submits an offer today on a property, by the time they have met with their agent, it's probably a two and a half hour process just going over the initial offer and the addendums that accompany an offer now. Some of those are disclosures, some of those are just addendums. And normally a buyer is going to be signing around 32 to, four, 30, 32 to 34 pages with the initial offer. Wow. And, those, and by the way, those are the California Association of Realtor forms. That does not include separate forms that come from franchises and, and other specific companies. And, and does that include all the new, the uh, current COVID forms and all of that as well? COVID's been done in advance of that. COVID, oh, okay, before COVID, that. You sign that you, you basically go over the COVID forms before you even set foot in a property. So if you're somebody like me, and I, I'm, I'm the first to admit I can't read, right? So if I had to read 37 pages worth of documents, it would probably take me about a month and a half. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, I'm just a real horrible reader, so... To me, if I can get a copy of that document, you know, early on and, you know, kind of familiarize myself, some of it, I mean, is is going to be the legalese I may not understand ever, but the the data that's in there, there's going to be a lot of information that, 
know, we just want to want to understand. And that way, when you fill in the blanks, it's, it's a lot easier. And I'm going to submit that in many instances, and I use it myself, DocuSign is a, is a very common product now. If I try to sign the, 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 a contract, which I can do on my phone, the problem is I can't see it. You know, I, I, I'm probably uh, not alone in my thinking, but most people who sign documents via DocuSign just want to know or they just say, where do I sign? Right. Without reading it, especially when it comes to something like a purchase agreement, especially. Yeah, and you need to have that information. You're spending, you know, in Southern California, probably a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars, and you know the number could go have more comments than that, right? So we're going to talk more with Linda Eisenman when we come back. You're listening to Ron Segal Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. We're going to also chat a little bit about home buyer demand far above last year's pace, and we've got a featured home brought to you by MySoCalLender.com. MySoCalLender.com. All that and more, you can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio, on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Sika Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, You'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or anytime at 800 306 
1990, the real time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. SLT Home Digest 79564. Tells you exactly what the county recorder knows about your property and what the market believes about your property. SLT Home Digest, it's a monthly email you get, and it is absolutely free from your friends at Ron Siegel Radio. Home buyer demand is far above last year's pace. Home buyer has been on the rise over the past few year, few months. With record-breaking sales powering through the market in June and July, buyers are actively purchasing homes, and the momentum is continuing into the fall. It is, however, becoming harder for buyers to find homes to purchase. If you've been thinking about selling your house, the coming weeks might be just the timing you've been waiting for. According to the pending home sales report, from the National Association of Realtors, quote, pending home sales in July achieved another month of positive contract activity, marking three consecutive months of growth. The pending home sales index, a forward-looking indicator of home sales based on contract signings, rose 5.9% to 122.1 in July. Year-over-year -year contract signings rose 15.5%. An index of 100 is equal to the level of contract activity in 2001, unquote. This means that for the past several months, buyers have, si have signed an increasing number of contracts to purchase homes, well above where the market was at this time last year. Lawrence Yoon, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, notes, quote, we are witnessing a true V-shaped sales recovery as home buyers continue their strong return to the housing market. Home sellers are seeing... Their homes go under contract in record time, with nine new contracts for every 10 new listings. So I'm sharing a graph for those of you watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, or if you're on the AM 1490 ABC News and Talk feed, video feed, you can see the graph that we're showing, the deep blue V marks, the slowdown from this spring that turned into an exponential jump in sales that followed through the summer skyrocketing above the past years. So what's this mean for sellers? If you're thinking about putting your house on the market in the spring, but decided to wait due to the health crisis, it may be time to make your move. Buyers are in the market right now, with so few homes available to purchase. Homeowners today are experiencing more bidding wars, creating an optimal time to sell. So is the trend going to continue? That's the big question. As CNBC notes, there are no signs of slowing buyer demand this fall. Quote, the usual summer slowdown in the housing market is not happening this year. Buyers continue to show strong demand spurred by the new stay-at-home world of the coronavirus and by record low mortgage rates. Danielle Hale, chief economist at Realtor.com, concurred. In a typical year in the housing market, buyer interest begins to wane before seller interest causing the usual seasonal slowdown as we move into the fall, due to delayed spring season and low mortgage rates, we could see buyer interest extend longer than usual into the typical quieter fall. This means more home sales will depend on whether sellers participate or decide to stay on the sidelines. As Hale mentioned, homeowners who are willing to sell their houses right now will play a big role in whether the trend continues. The market needs more homes to satisfy ongoing buyer demand. Maybe it's time to leverage your equity and move up while eager home shoppers are ready to purchase a house just like yours. Bottom line, if your current home doesn't meet your family's changing needs, hey, give us a call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. I'd be more than happy to put you in touch with a great realtor anywhere in the sound of my voice. Again, 800-306-1990. That's the real-time real estate segment. Brought to you by the Area Trusted Real Estate Professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text SLT Home Digest to 79564. Continuing our conversation, Linda Eisenman is with us this morning. Learning a, and, and remember that the issue, when I talk about these reports, I just want to share with you, remind you, the reports that we get on a regular basis are national data. That doesn't necessarily translate into local data. And you need a great real estate professional like Linda who can give us the local, what's happening on the street locally. You know, I, I do a little radio show here, lead a lending team. So we understand numbers, right? But we're not out on the street seeing and hearing 
what are the sellers saying? What are the buyers finding? One of the things, and I'll ask you about it, Linda, is that the issue that comes up a lot, and I've seen this over the last three months with a lot of the people that we've been with our private clients helping them with financing, is some of them are starting to go back to the 2010, 11 time where they're getting frustrated because they make so many offers that they're getting tired of writing offers and getting rejected. Are you finding that? I haven't found it yet because we've been mostly on the listing side. Actually, okay. my transactions have this year have all been listings, so okay. I haven't worked with that many buyers. But I'm sure it is happening out there. But all I can say is don't give up. Don't give up and do everything you can working with your agent to try and strengthen your offer as much as possible. And again, that's not always just about price. A California contract has so many contingencies built into it, and those are con those contingencies are primarily for the protection of home buyers. And it's a way for buyers to satisfy questions that they may have. And most of those are disclosure issues, things that the seller may or may not even know about the property. Uh, above and beyond the loan contingency and an appraisal contingency, for example, one of the big contingencies is the inspection of the property. And there isn't any reason why a buyer could not be prepared in advance to know exactly who they're going to use for the inspector once they're ready to, to move forward at that point. And that's something that the buyer should be addressing with their agent, or the agent should be addressing with the buyer the other way right. around in the very beginning and say, look, look, one of the things that we're going to do once your offer is accepted is we're going to have your physical inspection. And you have, you have the ability to choose your own inspector. And this is a site you might want to go to to look at some sample reports. Or you may have sample reports from some of your favorite inspectors. But by the way, the choice of the inspection is the inspector is always up to the buyer and not the buyer's agent. That's a big issue so, right there. It right? Is. Because it, it, you're paying for it. You should be, you know, buy, do your own due diligence. And, and that's, to me, the, the physical inspection is one of the most important times for a home buyer. And also for a home buyer to be present with the inspector at the time the inspection is done. Now, not every home buyer wants to go to an inspection. Maybe both spouses don't, maybe one or the other. But as far as I'm concerned, if they're not there for the entire inspection, that's okay. If they're there for the recap and they have an idea of what's taken place during the inspection and what might be the major concerns for an inspector. And the major concerns are the ones that you're going to really want to address. There's going to be a lot of, insi not insignificant, but there's going to be a lot of minor items on the inspection report. Sure. Because it's that inspector's job really to pick that home apart and, to, and find out issues that could be of concern. But that, the inspection, like I said, is just one of them. But one of the things that you might want to do as far as a home buyer is already know who your inspector is going to be and be able to review some inspections ahead of time. And if an agent can provide some of the disclosures that are going to be required just so a buyer can review those in advance. And so a buyer can really have a good idea about what they're buying right from right the very first few days and not necessarily wait till they get that inspection back. Sounds like some great information right there because that is, you know, if, if you're, and, and it, it kind of ties in. And I was, I was chuckling to myself, and as you're chatting there, as you're, you're, you're educating us on that, because I, I think it was last week we had uh, uh, Joe Ingram was in, and we spent a lot of time talking about personality types. And, you know, I'm the personality type that I wouldn't even know what the heck the inspector is looking at, even if he was just putting a light bulb in a socket, right? So you know, I don't understand what side of a screwdriver to use. So to me, I'm looking at it saying, okay, I need to know when are we going to be at about the last half hour or hour so I can get the and recap. And that's okay, too. Actually, right? re recap is usually the most important part. And one of the things that as a home buyer, you don't want to, you don't want to be a nuisance at an inspection. You don't want to get in the, in the way of the inspector. You want the inspector to do his or her or their jobs while right. you're there. But I think the recap is the most important part of the inspection process, quite frankly. So that's an important part of it. We're also looking at the concept of um, we want to make sure that if you're the S or C type, right, where you're really a, a, the individual that likes detail, right, then that's the person that, that you're talking about. You have the right to be there and just, you know, be the a shadow to the inspector. You can, as, you can as long as you're not in their way. Right. And, and that, that can be a concern for some inspectors. And by the way, not all inspectors are the same. I mean, ask your agent for sample reports. And I had one inspector say to me not long ago, he said, well, I really don't use a lot of photos in my reports. He said, I explain it, but I don't use a lot of photos. And I thought, how hard is it to take a photo of something? And, you know, what about the old adage is a photo is worth a thousand words? Right. I mean, I, I'm a visual person. Me too. I need to see it. If there's a problem, if there's... 
an issue that is visible, I need to see it myself. That's a uh, an inspector that would not be one that would be on the list that I would provide. <laughs> I agree. Right. I mean, and I I, I just call it out there because they don't. We don't work. You and I, neither of you and I, you or I, work for any of the inspectors. Um, we have our favorites. I, I recommend all the time uh, John and Melissa Hammond. They're here locally in, in uh, the Orange County area. But you know something, if it's if it's some of these other issues, I'm just uh, I'm, I I gotta have the pictures. It's it's. Everybody's got a camera with them nowadays, right? I mean, we can take a picture of somebody walking into a hair salon if we want to um, and do any, anything. So when you're saying you're not doing that, it's basically telling to me, you know, I don't know who the inspector is and I don't really care. But that's, I don't know who it is today either, yeah. but that's been some time Right, but, but, but I would basically be saying that's somebody that sounds kind of lazy to me, right? And if they're going to be lazy on taking the photo, what else are they lazy about? Well, to me, it would be easier just to sh easier to show it on a photo than to try and describe it in right. detail without a photo. Take a picture, circle. This yeah. is what I'm looking at. But but again, ask your agent ahead of time. Do you have some sample reports? Do you have a couple of different, you know, not just the same, necessarily one or two, but if you have several different inspectors that you work with? Yeah, there's a, a very very large realtor conference going on right now, and one of the things that they're promoting, and you're going to start seeing this because of the way the this this particular uh, coach works is the, a concierge program with realtors and I want to talk to you a little bit about that and get your opinion of that when we come back as well Linda. you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets we're going to have that featured home coming up when we come back brought to you by mysocallender.com mysocallender.com we'll have that featured listing you reach me anytime, our off-air number 800-306-1990 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed-rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the SIGA Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today. Ron Siegel, 1 800 306 1990. That is 1 800 306 1990. 
Subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRE and MLS 217037 and 145502 and Cal BRE 1869452 and 1866775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or any time at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The My Featured Home segment today being brought to you by... MySoCalLender.com, one of my favorites, MySoCalLender.com. They've got some great data on there to find out almost about, about almost any property within the sound of my voice, MySoCalLender.com. This property brought to you by Paula Barrett, 641 South Dewberry Lane, Anaheim Hills, 92808. I thought I knew where most of Anaheim Hills, Dewberry, Dewberry Lane. I'm not even familiar with that one. Beauty in the secluded Laurelwood community in Anaheim Hills, tucked inside a cul-de-sac corner unit, upper level. The home has multiple amenities. That's good to know. Open floor plan, cathedral ceiling, two-car garage, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, living room, fireplace, slider to a cozy patio, sky-high ceilings, inside, side-by-side -side laundry in the hallway, tasteful decor. We've got a lot of good stuff for this property. Uh, welcoming master... I don't know what to do with a welcoming master bedroom. Like, the only thing I say would probably get me in trouble, right? Vaulted ceilings, oversized closet with mirrored wardrobes, sliding closet doors, all of that for $508,000 in Anaheim Hills. So if you're looking for that starter home, I know that sounds crazy in certain parts of the country, but yes, in Anaheim Hills, that would be a starter home. 10% down, you're looking at about a $2,900 monthly mortgage payment, principal interest taxes insurance. 20% down, you're looking at $2,558 a month, principal interest, and that all includes the HOA as well. Think about that, $2,558 a month for a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. What are you paying for rent? Just throw that out there. And I better, for the compliance people that may be listening, yes, that's a 3.27 APR and a 3.111 APR. And my NMLS is 217037. Great property, it looks like. And heck, I know some people that may even like that property. So I might tell them about it. Maybe I won't. But that is the featured home brought to you by MySoCalLender.com. MySoCalLender.com. If you need any information on properties, they've got it all for you. Get the financing in there. Continuing our conversation with Linda Eisenman this morning, we're talking about getting your offer accepted. And Linda, I'm a, I'm a little old school. I don't know about you. They, when you talked earlier about the concept of the buyer's agent mm -hmm. calling and talking to the listing agent or, or speaking to the listing agent, finding out what the, the buyers want. Are you talking about picking up a phone really and calling somebody? Absolutely, reaching out. <laughs> You know, be, be a live voice, be a live person, connect, connect ahead of time if you can, and find out from that. If you're representing the, the buyer, if I'm representing a buyer and the buyer's agent, I'm going to try and reach that selling agent ahead of time and say, what's important to your seller and the offer they accept? And what, what's important might be whether or not they need a short escrow, they need a long escrow, maybe there's a rent back involved. You know, there's other extenuating circumstances other than just price. It's not always about only the price. That fascinates me how so many people don't even think about that portion of it as to, you know, what is, what is, and then they negotiate. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a house, you're talking about a car, you're talking about a job, right? Because there's people that, that you know, I, I've known of folks that have got to a job and they've taken a lower salary for flexibility. Yes. And, and it doesn't happen often, but there are a, there's a few times that I have had a seller actually accept an offer that was slightly less than the highest offer because they connected with that buyer. So how do you connect you, though? How do you make that happen? Well, there's several several ways in which you can connect. If you have an opportunity to meet a home seller, and there's a lot of agents that will tell the sellers, don't even be present. And quite frankly, I don't want my sellers to be around either during the entire showing process. If I have sellers who are normally home, what I'm gonna ask them to do is step outside while the buyer is looking at the home and allow the agent to show the buyer and allow the buyer to look at a home um, on their own and at their own pace and without having somebody look like they're looking over their shoulder because that's the last thing you want. 
However, there are times that on the way out, if the buyer has any other questions, sometimes we might just ask the seller directly without asking any confidential information because that you don't want to breach that situation sure. because it's somebody else's agent. You're hopefully only representing your buyer at that point. But th there might be a question that comes up about something in the yard or something like that. So there's a way that occasionally when buyers and sellers meet, they can either like or dislike them for different reasons. So that could be one way. Another way is, and I know agents have done this for a very long time, but you can write a buyer, we call them a buyer love letter, they get nothing, anything else. But it's something that the buyer usually or can write to the home seller and say and tell them why they love the home. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit about their family if they do have a family. And I'll give you an example. I had a home in uh, in Brea and we had multiple offers on it. My sell, my buyers wrote a letter to the sellers, tell them about the home, why they like the home, and they included a picture of them around their own Christmas tree, the buyer's Christmas tree. And the buyer said to me, "Gee, do you think this picture is a little cheesy?" the letter and I said yeah I do think it's a little bit cheesy but let's go with it lo and behold when their offer was accepted when we met the seller's son because their parents had passed away when we met the seller's son at the property he said to my buyers I really love that picture in your letter because this is right where our family put our Christmas tree and your your letter reminded me of that can you imagine that yeah oh, what a yeah. unusual connection but it worked but, in their case yeah <laughs> and, and, and you know something there's a lot of things that can be done and this is goes to my personal opinions and and I think you probably share this one with me Lynn is that when you have good counsel you're going to get some tricks of the trade that you may not hear otherwise, right? There are, there are some buyers agents that will say, you know, something I want to put together, like you say, the love letter. Some will say, let's make a little video. I've had agents that, and we do this all the time. If we have the time to do it, not our time, but if we give enough free time is as a, for some of our private clients, we'll make a little video that the buyer's agent can include talking about what we know about the family that's buying because we've, we've done due diligence and we know about their strength of their, their financing. Excellent. Right. So those are all, and those are all things that it's just that little extra step that gives the, the sellers that level of comfort. We we're buying something that we believe is going to be our castle, but for the most part, that already is somebody else's somebody castle. Else's, absolutely. Right. And, you know, unless like in your case, maybe that, that son would grew up in that property. Right. He, he did. And that's exactly There's what memories. He, that's exactly what he was addressing with the buyers that, yes, this is exactly what we did when I was here when I was a little kid. So you're, you're getting into something that most people don't want to talk about because it, it is, can be an unfair advantage is, you know, you've got the contract and I know you're an expert in the contract. I know three or four lines in the contract. Right. But, the one thing that is is a unfair advantage is if you can tap into emotion, right? Because if you can tap into that seller's emotion, they can get an emotional connection. You know, we were talking about this with Joe. We got to listen. Someone has to like you, to listen to you, to believe you, to buy. <laughs> right? And everything fits into those four somewhere. If they don't like you, they're not going to listen to you. If they don't listen to you, they can't believe you. And if they can't, don't believe you, they're not, not going to buy not from you. Buy. Right. So if we can tap into that with some of these uh, experience items. Well, and there's so, you know, we have to realize that we're not, we're not dealing with just bricks and mortar. Right. We're not dealing with just numbers. This isn't necessarily just an investment property. This is a place where people are going to call home. Right. And they look at it entirely. Most people look at it entirely differently. Both sellers and buyers folks. Again, it's not always about the highest dollar. I've told, talked to many sellers in my day and I've, I've said to them that you need to divorce yourself of the property right it's a, it's a it's a cold callous term and that's the idea because until they do that are they going to really listen to you as the professional who says you know something we need to take away the family pictures because we don't want the buyers to focus on family pictures we want them to focus on how their family is going to feel in this house. Which where's Johnny's room going to be? Where's Sally's room going to be? That's right? true. That's true. And, and that's actually that's something that we've done for a long time. And that first, I think that really first entered residential resale, probably when we began to stage most properties or more properties. We want the buyers to be able to see themselves in that home and not necessarily the people that are hanging on the hallway wall. Right. 
Great information. If you want more information about how to win that offer, give us a call, 800-306-1990. A lot of experience. I don't say tricks to the trade. There's experience to the trade. And that's why you want to have a great real estate professional representing you. I recommend Linda very highly because she knows what she's doing. She's seen it. There's every market. You, you, there's not a whole lot of market. We have found one that you haven't seen before. Now you've got, you put pandemic on your. Well, pandemic is <laughs> Although a lot of the things we're doing as a result of pandemic are things. Some things are similar to what we've done before. But yes, this one is a little different. I got to admit that. <laughs> a little. In all my years, I got to admit it. Absolutely. So if you want more information, just give me a call 800 306 1990 or ronsigoradio.com. Connect with us facebook.com forward slash ronsigoradio. And as always, we ask set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ronsigo Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Again, if you want to meet any of our guests, call me anytime 800 306 1990. Big thanks to John and Sean who are engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions, call me anytime, 800-306-1990. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.